His name is Fahook, it's spelled with a PH, so he sounds like Fahook. Alright, Fahook, calm to Fahook, fuck down. So, The Gentleman, written and directed by Guy Ritchie, stars Matthew McConaughey, Hugh Grant, Charlie Hunnam, Jeremy Strong, Henry Golding, and a bunch of big names. So the story is about a drug lord, Mickey Pearson, played by Matthew McConaughey, who wants to retire from the drug scene, and he wants to sell his highly profitable underground weed farm to a character named Matthew, which is played by Jeremy Strong. However, informa however information gets leaked and several parties get involved, namely Dry Eye, the Chinese gangster, um, played by Henry Golding, The Coach, which is literally a coach at a kickboxing gym, played by Colin Firth, and Fletcher, played by Hugh Grant, who is basically an information rat who sells information to the highest bidder. So the majority of the movie is being told through a conversation between Fletcher and Ray. So Fletcher, played by Hugh Grant, Ray, played by Charlie Hunnam. So Ray is a personal assistant of Mickey Pearson, and Fletcher essentially tells Ray everything he knows and blackmails him into paying him a Bun a large sum of money because he has leverage, he has all the information. So most of the story is actually being told through their conversation and it's very interesting because so Fletcher tells Ray everything he knows through the form of a movie script because he's like a movie junkie or something. So that was pretty interesting. So the timeline of the story literally catches up to the present point in the movie and everything, all parties come together and essentially builds up to an incredible finale. So in classic Guy Ritchie fashion, the story is told in a very sort of Guy Ritchie way where one object, in this case the weed farm that Mickey Pearson is trying to sell, brings together several party and all the people, whether you're connected directly or indirectly, essentially gets involved. It's kind of like Snatch and Lockstock if you've seen those movies. So the movie is extremely fast paced. There's basically constantly things going on since the audience need to catch up up to the present point in the movie. So there's small events that are scattered across the movie. Although I feel like sometimes it felt a little bit slow. I don't think it was slow in terms of the action because the scenes were very fast paced, but it was a bit slow because I wasn't completely sure what the scene was going to build up towards. And we, we're not told to anticipate anything big until like the very ending where everything comes together. But then again, that's how Guy Ritchie does it and it's still a very entertaining movie. Eventually everything comes together and the entire film sets up for an amazing payoff. So what I really like about Guy Ritchie is that when he does things like this, he'll scatter information throughout the movie, which everything will eventually come back in the end. So it's not like, say J.J. Abrams, where he set up mystery boxes that is never opened and the entire audience end up wondering, hmm, I wonder what that character was gonna say to the other character that he didn't get to say. So in this movie, or classic Guy Ritchie fashion, everything that sort of set up or scattered throughout the entire movie, all the information essentially used. Even though sometimes for a long period of time, a character's name wasn't mentioned, they will eventually come back. If they played a part in the beginning, they will play a role in the ending, in the finale, which I thought was amazing. There's no, no lazy writing in this. Everything, every payoff is set up. There's no ex machina. All the characters that end up helping out the protagonist or end up against the protagonist comes from somewhere that is actually already written within the story rather than just like, BAM! This person is now here to help the protagonist. The character is amazing, all the actors did a phenomenal job in my opinion. Matthew McConaughey was extremely charming as the main character, uh, Mickey Pearson. Jeremy Strong plays Matthew and he was amazing at playing this snob. Like throughout the entire film, every time I see him on screen, I just want to punch him in the face. Hugh Grant, Hugh Grant is very... <laughs> Hugh Grant transformed into this role. Usually we know Hugh Grant as, you know, the... the Prince Charming in, in, in a rom-com movie, but in this movie, he is just, he's a rat. He has basically no honor and he looks like a rat. He speaks with a very street Cockney accent. And I don't know, I found him, he's extremely hilarious. Hugh Grant and Charlie Hunnam's chemistry in this movie is amazing. They have some incredible back and forth, very good banter, very funny, witty dialogue. And it's very, very enjoyable. Also the character of um, the coach, played by Colin Firth. So he is probably my favorite character in the entire movie. He was so funny. Colin Firth, this sort of reminds me of the movie in Bruges, if you guys have seen it. He, he has really good comedic timing. He can really do comedy. Um, he can really make a performance very, very funny. And he was very funny in this movie. But basically everything he said, I laughed because it was, it was funny. I found him hilarious. Yeah, out of all the actors, I'm probably gonna say Henry Golding was probably the weak link. Oh, there's a fellow Asian that should support him being, you know, the Asian that's paving the way for all Asian actors. 
who wants to be a Hollywood? <laughs> I mean, who knows? He might even be the next James, Asian James Bond or something after Idris Elba. Does the the black James Bond? I don't know. Maybe it's just because he was acting alongside big names like Matthew McConaughey and stuff. But he just he wasn't as funny, and he was just I don't know wasn't as smooth as the other characters. I know you might say it's part of the character, but I don't know. I just didn't like his performance as much as the other characters. I still think, I mean, he did a good job. I think, I don't think it was bad, but it was probably relatively weaker compared to the other actors. And also, George. Which George? King George, Angry George, George the Dragon. Be clear, Arthur, which George? Our George, Chinese George, Kung Fu George. All in all, it's a very entertaining movie. By no means is a masterpiece, but it brings back the classic Guy Ritchie we all love from Snatch, Lockstock, and all his past gangster movies. If you like Guy Ritchie, if you like his style, you will really, really like the movie. I personally love the movie. I like Guy Ritchie's style. I think it's very unique. He's not one of those, you know, uh, directors who never misses a film like uh, Christopher Nolan or Quentin Tarantino or whatever that constantly just pumps out good movies after good movies that everybody well, his fans always like. I don't know, Guy Ritchie has hit and misses. He has a very unique style, and I, I personally, I really like his style. I really like the um, quirky, tongue-in-cheek British humor. Uh, there are very, a lot of banter in it, and a lot of sort of um, witty, sort of witty dialogue. Cockney accent makes everything funny for some reason. Yeah, so the movie is basically purely for entertainment. There's no, you know, deep themes or ideas, discusses big worldly issues or anything like that, but it does a really good job entertaining. And I think it's a very, very funny, very entertaining film. Basically, if you like Guy Ritchie and like his style, you should definitely watch the movie. And if you like gangster, crime films, a little bit of mystery, then you should watch the movie. And also, even if you're just looking for a break, something light, something fun, away from, you know, the sad, tragic, deep emotional type of movies, Oscar type of movies, and you're just looking for something purely for entertainment, just to have fun, have some popcorn, enjoy your Friday night with your friends, you should definitely watch this movie.